the Ortho PAC, hosted by Sam Dyer. Welcome to the Ortho PAC, where we discuss up-to-date orthopedic topics for the busy clinician. I invite you to sit back and relax as I attempt to fill in the gaps between education, current events, and real-world practice. Welcome back, listeners. My name is Chuck Dowell. I'm guest hosting the episode today. Today, we have the pleasure of having one of our student scholarship winners from 2024 on the podcast. Christina Thomas is a PA student from the University of Pittsburgh. Christina, thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. As you might remember, the PAOS Foundation awarded four $5,000 scholarships to PA students this year. These students were selected from 10 finalists who presented a case study, a review article, or a clinical pearl, and were invited to attend the PAOS conference that was in Nashville this year. Christina, what was it like to be at the conference in Nashville this year and present your work? Yeah, it was really cool. It's so great to get to network when you're a student and haven't been able to do that, but also just great to kind of see what the foundation and the PAOS is doing. So it was a really fun time. And I had never been to Nashville, so that was fun to do. Yeah, Nashville is definitely a fun city. Definitely one of the better locations that we do the conference at. And the hotel was in a good place in town where you can easily access a lot of the fun things to do in Nashville. Yeah, I had a, such a great time. I took myself down to all the line of bars and <laughs> hung out and just, you know, had some tonic water and watched some shows. So it was great. Excellent. Well, for the listeners, Christina's case review was uh, titled Comprehensive Treatment of Dysplasia with a Periacetabular Osteotomy and Arthroscopy in a 40-year-old female. That this relies on multidisciplinary team, and she did a case example regarding this. Can you tell us a little bit more about this uh, case example you did? The case example is exactly as the title, but a 40-year-old female with a history of instability and also impingement who had a PAO or a periostabular osteotomy and femoroplasty and labral repair. And it kind of outlines her from surgical intervention all the way through her final treatment. And this case was very unique because it had a lot of parts that are pretty frequent with some PAO patients, but also some infrequent injuries or things that happened afterward. And we used an entire group of uh, medical providers to work with us on this team. And I think that it just showcased the importance of using a team when we treat patients to get patients the best satisfaction and best outcomes that we can. Yeah, obviously the PA profession is all about that kind of multidisciplinary team approach. You know, us as PAs and uh, advanced practice providers are part of that physician to PA team. I know prior to PA school, uh, you were a PT. As you said, this patient had some post-operative soft tissue changes that required some PT. So do you feel like that kind of background helped you with communication involving the PTs with, with this case and just seeing those soft tissue setbacks that the patient had? Yeah. So this case is super unique because I'm really fortunate where I work. I work for an orthopedic specialty hospital and I'm lucky as a physical therapist and I still see some limited patients. I was able to work in a diagnostic capacity with a sports medicine provider and also with a arthroplasty and hip preservation surgeon. So I was actually able to follow this patient from the first encounter in the physician's office all the way through her physical therapy and was able to work with all these different providers and getting her the treatment that she needed. As a physical therapist, I've really leaned on this team approach and it's completely changed the way that I practice and the patient outcomes that I get because patients feel like they're getting best care And also it's helped me to grow as a practitioner in my education and learning because I'm learning from so many different providers and their areas of expertise. So, you know, this is a really fun case for me because I got to be a part of every step along this journey, kind of making medical decisions, but also working with those providers to come up with solutions to things that maybe we didn't have solutions for prior to this patient. So it was really fun and it's definitely changed the way all of us view the rehabilitation of PAOs, especially PAOs over 35, which there's not much data for that patient population. Yeah, that was definitely the unique aspect about this case. And, you know, from my perspective, most of the PAOs I've seen in the past have been on pediatric patients. 
and obviously hip arthroscopy is in a evolving field. And, and so this was an interesting case, definitely combining both of those approaches. As you said, I feel the same way. I think a lot of patients can get significant improvement uh, secondary to soft tissue imbalances because a lot of the soft tissue injuries and or injuries we see are involved with the soft tissue. And, and as a PT, you have multiple modalities to help with a lot of these inflammatory conditions. So it's definitely unique for you, especially with this patient having three or four kind of soft tissue uh, difficulties, um, you know, being able to communicate with the physical therapist and the family practice intervention on the radiology to, to get a lot of those things better. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So, you know, one of the complaints the patient had, um, you guys did some injections. How do you feel like that helped this patient? Something that's super common in the, the literature as well as in my own personal experience is iliopsoas tendinopathy. And I think that prior to this patient, we kind of just believed it was just a um, overuse issue, like the iliopsoas tendon was stabilizing this now very, very unstable pelvis. Um, and so we thought, oh, just give it time. With this patient, I think that we determined that some of our patients are likely experiencing iliopsoas pain due to approximation to the pubic ramus cut. And so... She complained immediately following surgery of like sharp pain in the hip flexor that lasted until we did the injection series. And so I worked with sports medicine and this patient on an injection series that we've been trialing in other body parts, but not necessarily after a PAO. We did a cortisone injection, which you got to be careful on timeline due to the healing bones. Um, but her bones were healing so quickly that we felt really comfortable with that. And we did two hydro dissections of D5 water and lidocaine. And we found that that kind of combination helps with some, any like nervy pain in the area, as well as helps to break up any adhesions and just kind of calms things down. And I think there'll be more research on that in the future as a mainstay of treating certain injuries. She was pain-free after those three injections. The first injection provided completely relief. And then we noticed probably it came back to about 50% of the previous level. And then the other two hydrodissections performed maybe four weeks apart helped to alleviate all those symptoms. And we discuss this all the time. Would time have just made that better? And I think that it probably would have. I think that that iliopsoas kind of remodels that pubic ramus cut over time. But when we start to talk about best practice for the patient and best outcomes, if we can get this patient back to strength training more quickly, we prevent things like atrophy. We prevent her from having emotional fallout of not feeling like she's moving in the right direction. And so I think that when we talk about getting patients what they need, this is a really great quick solution that doesn't take much from the patient or the providers. And it provided such significant relief that we're using it a lot more frequently in our patients that we believe need that injection series now. Oh, that's very interesting. So, you know, through this patient, you guys have seen that it caused relief with the the soft tissue iliopsoas pain. And so now you've kind of made that more common practice uh, with the, the surgeons you're working with. Yeah. And so if we see a patient that just, we're doing everything we can in physical therapy, but they're just not able to get rid of that very localized iliopsoas pain, then we send them to the diagnostic clinic that we have on campus and they'll do an ultrasound to confirm that that's what it is and we'll try the injection series. And that has been wonderfully powerful for us, for some of the patients that need it. It's obviously a small percentage, but it's enough that we've made it part of our standard practice. Very interesting. It was an excellent case review. All right. Well, thank you for listening to the Ortho PAC podcast. As you remember, the Susan Lindahl Memorial Scholarship Fund is an arm of the PAOS Foundation. Donations are tax deductible. Learn more about helping future ortho PAs at paos.org slash scholarship.